Hi folks, John Cordisco back from Cordisco's Chess Center. Over the weekend I played in the Eastern Class Championship. Uh, they have that in Sturbridge, Massachusetts. I live in upstate New York and I'm in the C Class, which is the under 1600 section. And uh, I played five games. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go through uh, each of the games and there'll be separate videos on those uh, to show you how I did and kind of talk about the games and that. It's a pretty good tournament. Uh, it's a nice it's a nice location around a nice lake and um, hopefully I get some video for you the surrounding lake around it. It's a great tournament. It's run by the Continental Chess Association and uh, I'm not going to tell you what happens at the end. I'm in the hunt for one of the prizes and uh, I'll get to that when I get to the last game. I'm going to show you here. I'm going to go through it. I went uh, e4, he went e5, uh, knight f3. I'm just going to breeze through this a little bit here to show you some of the moves at the beginning, save some time. E castle. Okay. At this point, you know, it's the first round. I'm feeling pretty good. What I did was I played in the two day, which is Saturday and Sunday. I went up Thursday night. I work a lot, so I wanted to get some rest. And so Thursday night, I I uh, slept in and until Friday morning, and then all day Friday, I just kind of hung around the uh, playing site. They actually play the first round on Friday night for the three-day people. So, so I was pretty uh, pretty rested for my first game here. But I haven't played a tournament game in a while out of town, and I just wanted to play solid. I wasn't going to take any chances. This was a younger kid, which I'm always leery of. When I say younger, he probably looked uh, uh, late teens. And you never know how strong these guys are. So I was just playing solid. I went bishop at g5. And he went like to c5, get his knight right up there in the thick of things. I had thought about going b4 just to chase his knight off. But I didn't want to, with that back, with that backward c pawn there, I had to move my bishop and my knight. I really didn't want to. So I just moved queen to d2, just solid. He went knight to e6, threatening my dark squared bishop. I took. He took back with his bishop. Uh, I castled, and he went exist chasing my bishop. <clears throat> it's pretty much standard stuff. There's nothing really fancy here. You can't see on the screen right now, but right now they have a tiny, tiny edge for black. Um... Mine is 0 0.09, which is, might as well say it's even. I went bishop takes, and he plays bishop takes. So now we have the two knights against two bishops. And uh, it's kind of, I thought to myself, well, this is going to be interesting. Uh, we'll see how this goes. With a lot of pawns on the board, I'm going to try to keep the position closed, of course, when you have knights the best you can. Uh, I wanted him to take my knight. I wanted to get those, those uh, pawns. In the center, I wanted my pawn on. on uh, what happened is I wanted my white pawns on here and here. And what he did was he played rook to c6. He didn't take. He didn't want to give up his bishop. And I went c4 just to reinforce my knight. Also, the fact that if he goes, if he uh, pushes his pawn to here and chase off my knight, I wanted uh, something there to blunt his bishop. He went c6, chased my knight, and this time I took the dark squared bishop. Technically, it's his, it's his good bishop, but at least I wanted my knight against his bishop in a closed position. I thought I would do better. He played queen takes. I went queen to e3. I'm still playing solid. I'm a little leery. It's, it's my first day. Uh, I don't want to lose a game or play a foolish move and so I was just playing solid just trying to get used to it he moved b6 I moved b3 to reinforce my c pawn he won rook on f to d8 now I'm gonna call this game I usually name all these games uh, I'm gonna call this game don't leave your cell phone on during a tournament no, actually, I'll probably call it No Cell Phones Allowed uh, for this game. And you'll see why in a couple of minutes. He went d4. He took, I took with the knight, threatening his bishop. He went d5. I had e takes, c takes. Uh, 
Nick takes the bishop. I finally got rid of it. I figured it's pretty open now. I might as well get rid of that bishop. F takes. C takes. D takes. And rook f to c1. Now around this time here, it was close to this, I could hear a little tune coming from his bag uh, by the underneath the table. And it was the cell phone going off. Now there are very strict rules uh, in chess tournaments considering cell phones for spectators as well as players but especially players. Uh, there's a lot of things. You can trans you could call in moves and help people and they got a computer and there's all kinds of cheating that could occur. And just the fact that it's just annoying period. So I heard his cell phone go off. He had about 17 minutes left on his clock. This is game 75. It's a shorter time control because we're on a two day schedule. And I said to him, is that your cell phone? He said yes. And I went, well you have to take 10 minutes off your clock. The rules state either half of your time that's left or 10 minutes whichever is less and so he kind of looked at me and I he says well I'm not going to adjust the clock we're just going to make it so when it gets down to uh, you know the time and he said okay he was a little flustered and so we continued on from here and I could tell he just wasn't playing ready he went d4 queen to c2 d3 just are pretty boring. If you notice here, I'll go back a move. What I didn't want is if I left my rook on a1, instead I decided to play my c rook to take his c rook, what would happen would be I would lose a rook. He would play queen takes the rook on a1, and then when I moved my king, he would take my other rook. I would lose a rook. So just in case I wanted to play c rook takes c rook, so I moved my rook over one. Rook to c2 he went to. Now this time he was so flustered because his time was getting so low. Now there's a five second delay. He'll get that. I think he was just moving because he saw his time was running out. He didn't have that extra time because he lost it with his cell phone. I played rook takes. He played takes. Queen takes. Now you're going to see this is going to be a very instructive rook and king ending. What I basically do in the end is I drive his king back and I end up with a pass b pawn. And his king can't come across to defend. I cut him off with my rook, and you'll see that shortly. If you can do that, if you can cut off his king in the end game, especially a rook pawn ending, because a king is a very powerful piece in the end game. Uh, it's worth as, worth as much as a piece, anywhere from three to four points. So his only hope, I think, was to keep the queens on the board. Uh, I want rook to d1. Uh, rook to e8, queen to d2. I'm just playing solid. I'm still trying to not to. If I could draw this game, I'd be okay. I just wanted to get my feet wet, and I just wanted to get used to playing in the tournament again. I play tournaments here at my store, but it's not quite the same as going out of town. Uh, you don't know the players. You might know some, but you don't know how strong they are. You don't know how weak they are, and so you're just playing solid. He moved his queen. I checked. I'm hoping to get some kind of check and make him trade queens. He went king to h8. I went g3. Just to get my pawns up. He went rook to e2. Now he's threatening my a pawn. And so I took my check. Now I'm not going to lose that a pawn. You'll see in a second after I check. Queen takes, rook takes, check. And then I went a4. Now he can't go to e3 with his rook. He can't go to this square and threaten my b-pawn because the f-pawn would take. And if he if he decides to put his rook here on b2 threatening my b-pawn, I can bring my rook back down to d3 to defend. So that's what he did. He went rook to b2. I came down with my Rook to d3 to defend. Also, at the same time, if you notice, I'm going to sneak my king up towards the center of the board, and I'm going to be able to cut off his king from helping. He's going to end up being on the king side the rest of the time, and he can never get over. He's trying to move it up now. Of course, we're trying to race our kings to the center. And, of course, I gave him some opposition there. Now, if you notice, his rook's kind of hemmed in. 
Uh, granted, my rook has to defend my b-pawn, but it's not always going to be there, so. Uh, he went a6. I went f3, bringing my pawns out to cut off the space for his king. He went rook to g2. I checked on f4. He moved his... Now, you notice now his king is now stuck on the king's side. I went after his rook with my king, and he went back to b2. Now I go forward to e4. Now, if he goes to play rook to h2, I can put my pawn right there. And my g-pawn is being guarded by my rook, and everything's solid. He went b5. I took. He took. And his king's kind of in an awkward spot. He doesn't want to move away, but he can't get to the king side. Now, if you'll notice, say that I played my king here, and say he plays his king there, that would have been a serious mistake. Because what would have happened is I would have moved my king to here with a discovered check, which would have won his rook. So his king is stuck on the king's side whether he likes it or not. And that's the key, of course, to this endgame. I want g4 to get my pawns up forward. You notice my h-pawn and my b-pawn are very well protected by my rook. And also the rook is playing double duty, is cutting off his king. So this is pretty good. And I'm, uh, I feel pretty good about what's going on. He played g6. And I moved my king right over right away. Now, granted, he can uh, go to c2, but it doesn't really do him much good because I block. He goes after that pawn. Now, I'm looking at this. I thought to myself, well, basically, it's going to come down to a trade. Um, I'm going to take his b pawn. He's going to get my f pawn. I consider that a good trade. That's exactly what happens. I check first, though. And I'm looking at the board here. He probably should have moved over to d6 with his king. He might have been concerned about the fact that I had the pawn majority over there. But I think either way, he was going to have a hard time. I think he kind of got defensive there. He was getting flustered. His time was getting very short because of his uh, loss of time because of his cell phone going off. And, of course, I went there. He took my F pawn, I took his B pawn. Now, you notice my rook is still doing excellent duty on E3. It's guarding my H pawn and guarding my B pawn. So I can move move him around here. He went rook to D4. I move my king over to make room for my pawn. He just moved his king and didn't want to move his pawn. He didn't want to leave, you know. I started moving my pawn. He goes behind to try to stop him. It really does no good to bring him down to where his black king is. Because my pawn and my, my king and my pawn will very much defend each other. Uh, the king is a strong piece in the end game. And he should be able to queen the pawn. So he's trying to get behind it. I moved up. He checked me. I moved one space away, not in front of the pawn. He went one space away, so you have a space for your pawn to go. He went rook to c2. I advanced the pawn. He went rook to c1. I went king to b7. It gives me an extra move. At this point, I don't think he knew what to do. His time was running out. I went b6. He went rook to c1. Now the pawn is going to queen. You'll see how it's done in a moment. He went rook to a1. And I went b7. So you're thinking, well, the king can't get out. But if you go on the c or the a file, he'll just check you and you go back and forth. You don't ever queen. Well, the reality of it, that's not true. And you'll see in a moment. What you do is this. No matter what file he was on, the A or C, you put your rook 
on the other file. If his rook is on the C file blocking my king from moving, you move the rook to the A file to block his check. And I want rook to C3. Now what that does, it allows my king to go to C8, allowing the B pawn to queen. I want king to e, he went king to E7. Now I can bring his king over, but it's way too late, of course. And I went king to C8, and he resigned. Um, he got a little flustered when he lost his time. And I didn't feel badly about the penalty because it's very well stated by the tournament director and everyone before they start. Cell phones off, and the penalties are. So that's my game. I'm going to call this one No Cell Phones Allowed. It wasn't that exciting of a game. Uh, there's going to be some good games coming up here, but this was just to get my feet wet. And when you're in the first round, and uh, it was the under 1600, I was about 1555, somewhere in there, 1558. So I was the third highest rated player in the section. So I didn't want to be under the gun in the beginning, so I didn't keep things very complicated. And. Um, I hope you enjoyed the game. Uh, remember, folks, if you think chess is just a game, you're not playing it right. And there will be four more videos to accompany this one uh, for the rest of the tournament. It gets kind of exciting in the last game. I'll explain to you the situation. And uh, I'll see all of you in the next video. Bye-bye, folks.